These posters of innocent kidnapped Israelis still being held hostage by Hamas. They are currently definitely making a storm all around in international media. To discuss it, I'm joined in studio by Emily Schrader, a correspondent for Ynet News, as well as a social media activist. Emily, as we were just watching that, that report, it's truly shocking to see this hateful act. And I'm curious just the, the reason behind it when we continue to see, in your opinion, why are people being so propelled? to destroy these posters in the first place? Well, I think it's two things. The first is anti-Semitism at its core. There's definitely a factor. But in addition to that, it's misinformation and disinformation, intentional, um, in response to this conflict. They they view this as being an issue uh, about Palestinians versus Israelis, when in reality, that's not what's going on at all. This isn't the issue in any way whatsoever. It's not even about Palestinians. It's about innocent civilians who have been kidnapped by a terrorist organization, which, by the way, also terrorizes Palestinians, uh, and, and raising awareness for these innocent civilians. It's not for or against the Israeli government, the Israeli position, the history of the state of Israel. It has no connection. And yet you see dozens and dozens, if not more, of people who are tearing down these posters, who are going out of their way to tear down posters of kidnapped children. I mean, it's, it's beyond logic. And that's why anti-Semitism is a core component of this. It's not a logical hatred. It's, it's not logical at all. And when you hear from some of these people ripping these posters down, they say, well, where's the information they're being kidnapped? Hamas released GoPro footage of them taking some of these kidnapped people. They're claiming it themselves. It's not the Israeli government that's saying this. It's Hamas themselves. That's right. I mean, I think one of the things about this entire war from the beginning has been that people have been skeptical or doubted or accused Israel and Israelis of lying or exaggerating or not having proof. No other group of oppressed people is is required to prove over and over and over again that they're persecuted. No other group of people, when they face a massacre, it gets responses like, well, do you have video of sexual assault? Do you have pictures and video of dead babies? I can't count the number of times people asked me, as a journalist in Israel, if I had photos of dead babies. No other group faces this. It is only when it comes to Israel. And that, that hypocrisy is completely unacceptable. It's not something that anybody should tolerate, no matter what their position is on Israel. Meanwhile, we are seeing some authorities, some municipalities standing up against some of these hate acts. What are we seeing around the world? Yeah, so there have been a few initiatives. I think it was also Montreal in Canada who's had an ongoing problem with this de-flyering, we'll call it. Uh, they have instituted some sort of penalty for it. I do think that every, every city and every country that is dealing with this issue should have an absolute zero tolerance approach, not just from the activist level of people like me or like Yoa, who, who you uh, played a clip from earlier on the important work that he's doing in New York, but from the government itself. This is a very important message. We're kind of at a boiling point when it comes to anti-Semitism globally. And so it's more important than ever that the leaders in the government, whether it's local or federal and in, in the larger scale, take a stand against this. We cannot accept this type of hatred and anti-Semitism and, and frankly, uneducated anti-Semitism. Because again, this is not a political issue. This is not about being pro-Israel. And yet still you see people who are so filled, so consumed with hatred, pure hatred against children, against babies, against innocent people. And by the way, also Arab Israelis. There are Arab Israelis who are in captivity. So the way that other people are framing this issue is impacting how they're seeing flyers on the street that don't really have anything to do with the political question. You say that the federal government should be taking more of a stance, but what exactly exactly can or should they be doing? I know also reports that some people are starting to hang their posters on private property, maybe versus public property. That way you can give a fine if someone is touching your own private property. Yeah, so what, that is the solution in the private sector, putting things on, on private spaces. Uh, but that being said, uh, yeah, I do think that there should be some sort of fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not uh, advocating jail time or something that extreme, but, but there does need to be something on the books in order to send the very clear message that this behavior is unacceptable, whether it be in France or London or New York. Something needs to be done to prevent this hatred from being manifested uh, so publicly in a way that is fueling anti-Semitism. I mean, you see in those clips, it's not just that people are randomly vandalizing it. That's one issue. It's that when someone approaches them, even calmly, professionally, and says, why are you doing that? Do you know what that actually is? Do you know what this flyer represents? Their response is, F you? 
Really? Look, there's, there's no logic to the hatred here. This isn't coming from a place where they even support Palestinians, which is one of the things, incidentally, that's important to know about the so-called pro-Palestinian demonstrations. If you're protesting in the streets, which, by the way, they were on October 8th, not October 25th, October 8th, okay, the day after the massacre, you are not pro-Palestinian. You are anti-Israel, and arguably you are anti-Semitic, because that's the only reason that you would be protesting when it, on October 8th there's nothing to protest. Israel hadn't even launched an operation in Gaza by that time. So there is no excuse for this type of behavior, not to mention the fact that if you are condemning Israel right now, you are also condemning Palestinians to live a life under Hamas. And that is not pro-Palestinian, as I think most Palestinians who have actually lived under Hamas would tell you. Emily Schrader, you have some very good points to be sharing, and I appreciate you for coming on and, and talking about just the hatred that we are seeing abroad right now. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.